<laughs> really different. How's it going? Good to see you all again. Oh, I've really picked my day this week to come out. It's the only day I can get out, but we've had four days of sustained uh, well, rain, wind, everything. It's still pretty poor now, but I'm not going to let it get in the way of me going out for a wild camp. You've seen from a couple of the early shots there, the sort of conditions I'm faced with at the moment. So what I plan to do this evening is go out set up a tent but also i've got my tarp with me as well which i'm going to use as a kind of huge vestibule hopefully uh, to keep dry whilst i do a bit of cooking um one of uh, uh, the comments on my last video was that i seem to do nothing but boil water so i'm going to just show that uh, i can do a little bit more than that so got a uh, good dinner tonight and a really good slap at breakfast for tomorrow morning i'm going to try out my telemark 2 lw tent which you saw on a review that i was doing with the tarp tent so the last video was with the scarp one and now i can sort of compare um, how they are between each other hopefully it's waterproof <laughs> i also um, have made some great modifications to my edc pouch so i'm going to take you through what uh, thanks to you what uh, modifications i did to that and the bits that i added and also the bits that uh, realized were not needed but yeah it's still raining i'm not promising a great deal of filming of my walk-in. Um, I came on a little recce here yesterday with my dogs to find out whether I could hide myself in a little bit of uh, woodland about 20 minutes uh, drive away from my house and I think I've got quite a secluded bit. I think it's pretty heavily rangered around here so um, I'm hoping to hide away a little bit. I'm gonna be really careful that I leave no trace um, once I do disappear but yeah I'm not promising a lot of filming between now and getting at least the first bit of shelter up, probably the tarp, and then um, I can cover the camera and so on and uh, get on with the rest of the filming. So I'll see you later. Well, it's a very waterlogged walk in. <laughs> but hopefully I'll find a reasonably dry-ish, more sheltered spot. Oh, but uh, yeah, it looks to be, well, the forecast is, it's quarter past five now, the forecast is from seven o'clock, there shouldn't be much more rain. So it's just a case of finding somewhere that's not uh, too waterlogged. The, uh, the river down there, which I was hoping to use as a source of water, is uh, <laughs> pretty brown but i think with my purifier at least it will be safe but uh, yeah well i said it was a fair weather camper and it's uh, good to give it a go when conditions are not so uh, great but yeah should be okay
I'm really pleased with the way things have gone. I've got a lovely break in the weather for the setup. I would have been in a bit of a tiz if uh, it had been rainy all through um, getting the camp set up. But I've got the tarp just how I want it with the entrance of my tent just under the roof of the tarp. So I've got plenty of workspace if it does uh, shower again. Yeah, you know, it's probably end up not even dripping <laughs> my luck after the, all the uh, time I've spent uh, getting this tarp just right but so yes I've got my Telemark 2 lightweight tent um, nicely set up now as I say just within the um, protection of the tarp got loads of good cooking stuff with me and looking forward to it usual sleeping bag the Robins uh, minus five with the Thermarest Neo Air which is great and um, blown up with that lovely little pump that I reviewed in the uh, in a couple of videos ago that's just fantastic works a treat so I think next thing I'm going to do is get a cup of tea on and whilst the uh, water is boiling for that start preparing some of the ingredients for the uh, evening meal which uh, I'm going to be very ready for I mentioned in one of my previous videos how terrible I am at um, using nice new things my brother Jamie bought me this I don't want to think how many years ago and I've never used it it's just been in a box in a cupboard and I'm determined to uh, yeah now it, uh, I put, it's got WD-40 on it and just picked up a bit of debris from inside the sheath here but it's absolutely unused it's a uh, Buca 440 stainless knife it's got a hollow grind Holly bevel grind there and a lovely little mini bevel. I don't know how I'm going to sharpen it. I hopefully won't need to for some time. Looks to be about three and a half to four mil thick spine and that'll definitely, feeling the edge on it, that'll definitely uh, make a spark with a ferro rod. Gonna make some char cloth tonight and I've got uh, loads of pure denim cotton in there and once I've got my fire going I'm just gonna chuck it in and leave it to also do my other things but for now let's get a little bit of a fire lit I love this knife. <laughs> I actually brought a lot of wood with me because it's been, as I said in the car, it's been just constantly bucketing down for oh, four or five days now. So while that fire's taking, I'll tell you what I've got. I found in my butchers some katsu curry sausages and I thought they might be quite fun to make a sort of katsu style curry with uh, just got some plain flour in here, a little bit of mustard powder actually, and some salt. 
got some oil, some katsu sauce which I've made up. I'll put all the ingredients in the description below. It's got onions, coriander, curry powder, soy sauce, etc. etc. in it. There's about 10 different ingredients. Got that, as I say, I'll list it. Don't need my milk yet. And uh, I'm just going to use some boil in the bag rice to have with it. So the first thing I need to do is to make this batter and it's uh, important that I don't add too much water. So I'm just going to do it in a just a tiny amount to begin with. And I bought these and these are the sort of katsu style uh, breadcrumbs. They're slightly more coarse than normal breadcrumbs so you get that nice crunchy coating with these sausages so that they cook properly. I'm going to split them down the middle and that will kind of butterfly them out nicely as well so that they can get a good coating in the breadcrumbs. Right, so, got this batter, and what I'm going to try and do is just pop one in at a time, a little bit of the coating, and then pop it in here and put some breadcrumbs in. I'm glad I bought plenty of kitchen towel and wipes and so on. <laughs> and it's been a good coating. Alright, that's going okay. I've got this lovely folding pan here which I'm gonna pop on top and you sort of semi shallow fry these but you need a fair bit of oil there we go. Time to plate up and have some. Whoa. Loads of rice. God. Doesn't seem much when you start in the bag, but uh, like it really expands. We should have some sausage katsu. And some katsu curry sauce. No, I don't think that looks half bad. Let's have a look at one of these then. Try the sausage first. Mm. Oh, 
that's lovely. Really, really different. Delicious. Well, when I saw these at the butcher, I thought, I knew it was my kind of thing. There you go. A bit of rice. Really, really delicious. I'm so pleased with that. Oh, what a meal. And for that uh, subscriber that said I did boring boiling water, there you go. There's some katsu sausage for you. The usual thing, I'm going to finish this. Just loving it. Sound of the water. Birds are singing away. Skies have cleared. Couldn't be better. So I'll get on with this and uh, speak to you a little later. Mm. This is really hard work. <laughs> I can't even turn the camera on. <laughs> I'm so full. Wow. There you go. It was good though. I don't know if you can pick that up, but the uh, the bird song is fantastic. So many different types. Well, I can hardly move, but I've got a bit of washing up to do. I've got a little um, tube of biodegradable washing up liquid. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get some water from the stream here, warm it up a little bit, get my washing up done. And that, uh, char cloth is uh, cooking away nicely I can see that the tin in there is absolutely red hot so uh, I'll just build it up around it one more time I think give it another 20 minutes and it should be ready well that uh, meals finally gone down <laughs> Dear, oh dear, oh, it was good though. I've got my camp sorted out, I've done my washing up and uh, sort of put away all the things that I don't need for tomorrow and obviously for tonight. So I hate uh, leaving things till last minute, so I've got it in some sort of order. And I was just gonna take you through the modifications I'd made to my EDC pouch. Um, thank you very much for all the feedback that I got. I got my son to write uh, <laughs> he wanted a job to do for some pocket money so I got him to go through all the remarks and make a list on a sort of word document of all the recommendations from you so thanks for that uh, and I'll show you what I've done so here's the new EDC pouch made by a company called Winex, Winex Tactical it's about I'd say two and a half times bigger than my uh, original effort and so let's see what I've done I won't take too long going over everything, but I'll just start from the back and work towards the, um, the middle and uh, the other side here. In the um, back sort of pouch here, I've got a foil blanket, a couple of pieces of tape and a bandage. Nicely they have these little sort of segmented areas with elastic, so everything can be at the ready. But I've got some cotton buds, um, a whistle, my pencil, a lighter, some alcohol pads there, alcohol wipes with some scissors, tweezers and some antiseptic wipes as well and my little Leatherman multi-tool. 
It was suggested as well, thanks, that I got one of these life straws. So I've got that to put in there. That's great. You just put the that end in your water source and then you can just take the cap off there and uh, suck it up just like a normal straw. That's brilliant. Moving round in this zippable pouch here, got probably the thing that came up for discussion the most, which was my tourniquet. I originally had uh, one that was quite uh, well spotted, that all it was for was for taking an injection in your arm so that it would uh, make the vein stand proud it wouldn't um, do the job of a proper tourniquet so i bought this and this is the um the proper job it's much more heavy duty you can feel it already it's got this sort of bracing arm there that you you twist and it um it pulls it all together tighter and tighter which also doubles up as a pen and you can write the time that you administered the tourniquet so that the emergency services um, will know how long your blood supply to the uh, wound has been blocked. I think you've got to have um, a lot of wherewithal to <laughs> to actually be thinking about that. But there you go. If someone's with you, it's a good thing. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that. That's the, um, the more appropriate sort of tourniquet that goes in there. Well, just before I uh, in there, I've got some little fire tinder the fire starting use with my lighter still got my notebook i've got my compass and my tenacious tape and in this uh, bit here i've got some ibuprofen tablets which great for my ocd there they stack up very nicely <laughs> and some antihistamines i've got a 10 pound note some people were suggesting 20 but i didn't have a 20 at the time so i put a tenner in there some sticking plaster and i've got my um, knife sharpener which fits in there quite nicely so all in all it's quite a lot bigger but i feel a lot more confident with um, having everything And there we are. And while all that was going on, these embers were dying down. And in here, I've got my tin. Still a bit warm. But, what I'm looking at is hopefully, there we are, some char cloth. And yeah, I can tell that's perfect. So there we are. You can just have that in your fire whilst you're doing your cooking. And there you go, ready-made uh, char cloth. Well, it's just been a great evening. I really couldn't have hoped for any more, uh, considering the sort of day it's been. It's been bouncing hailstones for a lot of the day, but yeah, it's just uh, turned out really nice. It's actually a clear sky. There's a nice sort of crescent moon. I'm doing a, um, a little time warp with my GoPro at the moment, so hopefully that uh, will come out nicely. But yeah, I'm... Uh, Gonna see how long I can. Uh, it's half past ten now. Um, I want to give the GoPro a good, uh, good chance because it you have to have it out a long time for a very short film. But I want to go to bed, <laughs> so you might get a very short night lapse, but you'll get the idea. But uh, I'm not going to film myself getting into bed, then come back and get the camera. <laughs> you know, you're not going to bed's like so. Yeah. I'll do that, go to bed, and I look forward to seeing you in the morning.
curry sauce in my glasses. <laughs> There we are. Good morning, welcome back. Um, not a bad night's sleep. I was really warm and it was, um, there was no disturbance, just the nice sound of the stream. It just took ages getting to sleep, I don't know why. Um, it's definitely past two o'clock when, uh, when I finally dropped off um, and the dawn chorus of the birds started at about half past three. But, uh, and all I could find was one earplug. So I just had to stick the earplug in one ear and lie on the other one. But uh, yeah, got uh, it's quarter to seven now. I've been sort of dozing for um, half an hour or so. Got myself a pot of water on the boil, and uh, yeah, it's main thing is it's not raining, and uh, and it's really just lovely to be out. So I'll start prepping up my breakfast things. And uh, yeah, we'll get on with it. Just going to try a bit of my wax fire lighting rope today. See. There we go. breakfast this morning we've got my homemade bacon which is uh, flavoured with molasses got some tatty scones and they're made with we had leftover mashed potato that I just added some more salt and pepper to and then quite a lot of plain flour and then you just rolled it out into about a quarter inch what's that I suppose that's uh, five millimeters thick cut them out and dry fry until they get about that sort of colour on each side and then I'm just going to uh, heat them through this morning I've got some of my smoked halloumi cheese and I've got a couple of eggs in there found this amazing skillet online that fits perfectly onto the fire trough I'll put um, the link to it in the description below and very kindly the company that makes them has uh, offered a discount and I'll uh, leave the details of that as well. Yeah, with this uh, skillet, you get the handle also, so you can lift it. But it also comes with a, a sort of bamboo style chopping board, so it's uh, designed to sort of for heaters and so on. So I think it's really good value. on there now and I'll just put my bacon on there keep it warm loom is ready now warming through these potato scones, tatty scones in a pretty dry pan because they are cooked just need to get some uh, heat through them and there it is well looks a bit of a dog's breakfast but especially with the bit of ash in there but I'm going to enjoy that as tatty scones halloumi homemade bacon 
free range eggs from the farmer just around the corner who uh, supplies them which is great and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to that Let's see how we do Halloumi. So smoky. Mm. Well, in the absence of a defibrillator, <laughs> I better get on with this quickly. <laughs> I don't eat this seven days a week I think uh, I'm allowed a breakfast like this probably once every month I think I have something like this so uh, not doing too badly I'll get on with this and speak to you later Well, that was some breakfast. <laughs> really enjoyable. Don't think I can move. Got my cup of tea. Label off the bottom of the cup. Thanks for the comments. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take down the camp now. I've got a lot of clearing up to do. I'll try and make it all really look neat and tidy in front of the camera and <laughs> sort of behind me I've got Tesco bag for life and all that sort of stuff uh, which I try to keep out of the shot to make it look um, a little bit more natural but I've got an awful lot of kit that I bring with me and um, not only do I uh, obviously bring what I need for the camp but I do bring a lot of um, uh, stuff to make the video you know the photography equipment <laughs> tripod and so on so uh, it's not all as uh, slick as it looks but i tried to keep it uh, looking pretty natural and all the uh, all the sort of modern tech um out of shot um but talking about modern tech a lot of people have asked me about the camera that i use that um, seems to pan around as though i had someone else filming for me it's a great little thing I borrow it off a fellow youtuber who who doesn't use it that often um, just said didn't really um, like using it um, but um, yeah I, I borrow it on occasion and what I'll do in the next video if you want is just a little short maybe a 10 minutes um, on it on it it's the insta360 rx2 something like that I'll get it exact in fact there you go that's the name of it <laughs> um, so if you want me to do just a little um, 10 minute video for the next one uh, where I profile that camera and what um, and how I use it and how I get that effect of it panning around then um, yeah we'll do but uh, I don't want to waste the YouTube video if, if, if most of you are really not not particularly interested but uh, yeah it's been a great camp. Uh, I'll take it all down now. <laughs> Hide my bags for life and uh, get home. 10 to 8 now, should be home um, by about half past 9 if I uh, take my time making sure, which I will, that uh, I've left no trace. But in the meantime, thank you very much for clicking on this video. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends. It'd be great to have some more uh, subscriptions. They are creeping up, but it does seem a slow process. But that's enough for me for now. I'll take down the camp and I look forward to seeing you again. <laughs>